Five persons were aboard a tourist submersible that vanished in the North Atlantic on Sunday, June 18. It was en route to the Titanic wreckage. Five days later, a costly search including ships, planes, sonar, and a remotely operated vehicle, ROV, found that the Titan had imploded, scattering wreckage on the ocean floor and taking all of the lives on board. The subject of media attention was OceanGate Expeditions and its overconfident CEO, Stockton Rush, whose obsession with creating a SpaceX for the ocean resulted in the disregard of industry standards and regulations and the construction of a submersible using off-the-shelf components, including a now-famous video game controller. But a puzzling Newfoundland connection evaded investigation. The Memorial University of Newfoundland's Marine Institute, located in St. John's, the provincial capital, announced in the MUN Gazette, the university's official news site, that it had partnered with OceanGate to give it access to its resources and students in the months before the accident. Why did a scientific research institution collaborate with a dishonest submersible company? Angie Clark, Associate Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs at the Marine Institute, is quoted in the press release as saying that our partnership with OceanGate expands the opportunities for our students to participate in ocean exploration and gain hands-on experience by supporting the pre-departure preparation and through onshore and sea-based work terms. An MUN student was working on Titan's mothership, the Polar Prince, when radio contact with the submersible was lost and it imploded. These expeditions provide students with insight into both history and their own futures in the ocean technology field as they support the dive teams and Ocean Gate's use of deep sea technology. How did Canada's top ocean technology institute, which was manned by professionals with training in the very areas where Ocean Gate had so spectacularly failed, ignore the warning signs? Ocean Gate Expeditions, based in Everett, Washington on the U.S. West Coast, encountered a logistical difficulty while establishing a deep diving operation on the U.S. East Coast. How to get its equipment back and forth following the summer diving season? By collaborating with Newfoundlanders, the business was able to avoid such a costly issue and get vital community support and experience. The MUN Marine Institute seemed the obvious choice. With work labs, storage areas, and a port for launching boats, the St. John's campus is a center for the maritime industry. In addition, the institute has simulators that can replicate any maritime scenario imaginable, including driving a vehicle underwater, loading and unloading a ship, maintaining an engine room, deploying lifeboats, and navigating at sea in a variety of maritime environments. When a Guardian journalist visited the Marine Institute in 2012, he was able to simulate the Titanic's crash with an iceberg using the bridge simulator. St. John's has evolved into the starting point for all Titanic-related missions, great and small, noble and less so, ever since the fabled shipwreck was discovered more than 600 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland in 1985. From St. John's Harbor, scavengers, archaeologists, scientists, filmmakers and tourists set out on their expeditions to the Titanic. At the Marine Institute in February of last year, Ocean Gate's Titan arrived. Joe Singleton, the Institute's interim head, said in an interview with the CBC in May about the recently announced relationship, everyone's super excited about it. The Titan would spend the ensuing months in the same lab where students studied how to maintain underwater vehicles. Rush would select the students who might travel with the expedition on the support vessel, according to Singleton, if he had gotten to know them well. Perhaps one of the expedition members had the willies and decided they didn't want to go. Singleton speculated to the CBC that the student might get an actual say at on the dive, even if there was no plan to put a student on the Titan itself. A marine contractor working out of Northwest River, Labrador received a call regarding an urgent offshore task the night the Titan vanished. A Bachelor of Technology and a Master of Marine Spatial Planning were achieved by Michael Hannaford at the Marine Institute via distance education. He currently conducts research while working as a marine planner in Labrador. Two days following the call, Hannaford joined a team of search and rescue personnel who were getting ready on a ship berthed in St. John's Harbor. Even though he was aware of the low possibility of discovering a survivor, he recalls the environment on board as being focused, busy, and optimistic. Everyone works under the assumption that someone will save them, he claims. Hannaford and the search team dropped a ROV into the Atlantic in the wee hours of June 21, just as the Titan was getting close to running out of its essential 96-hour oxygen supply. 
The first shift of pilots then began scouring the ocean floor. The crew found the Titan's wreckage within a short period of time. Any glimmer of a rescue mission swiftly vanished, leaving the team feeling frustrated. Hannaford heard about MUN's connection with Ocean Gate throughout the operation, including the fact that a student was on the support ship at the time of the incident. He questions why a maritime institute would collaborate with a business that offers scenic tours of mass grave sites to billionaires. I honestly find that to be pretty disrespectful. Hannaford was also concerned about MUN students being taken in by the dream of diving to the Titanic. They were dangerously close to getting on that stupid thing. There is absolutely no scientific merit to it. After the tragedy, MUN issued a statement in the MUN Gazette expressing condolences for the lives lost. The statement did not, however, express regret for the Institute's collaboration with OceanGate. Rather, it appeared to distance itself from a partnership that it had just recently celebrated. Neither Marine Institute staff nor students travelled on board the Titan. The Titan was initially launched by the support ship MV Polar Prince, but one student obtained a summer job with OceanGate and was there, according to the statement. Although MUN had previously referred to the affiliation between its Marine Institute and OceanGate as a partnership, a spokesperson for the university, Kimberly Thornhill, recently told the Walrus that the Marine Institute did not partner with OceanGate beyond providing storage and workshop space. To be honest, OceanGate expeditions have other respectable names associated with them in addition to the Marine Institute. The company's board of directors was chaired by a former rear admiral of the United States Coast Guard. Likewise, Paul Henry Nargiolet, a French submariner and Titanic authority who passed away on board the Titan, was well liked in the undersea exploration community. According to the New Yorker, OceanGate also looked for high profile supporters to support its innovative strategy. In a time when government funding for post secondary education is dwindling, there is a disturbing trend among researchers and universities of being under intense pressure to raise funds. MUN may have been interested in the Titanic mission due to its sensationalism or because it would allow it to promote maritime opportunities outside of the traditional businesses of shipping, fishing and oil and gas. Regardless of the reasons, MUN could have done a little more research to show OceanGate as an anomaly in the submersible community. Rush had received a personal letter from the Marine Technology Society MTS, in 2018 asking him to register the Titan with a reputable organization advice that he disregarded. Demun and MTS are closely connected. The current president of MTS received his education at MUN. The submersible's flawed design was the subject of a lawsuit filed by OceanGate at the same time against its former director of operations. Despite its technical know-how and community connections, MUN's Marine Institute seemed unconcerned about a deal with OceanGate and allowed the business access to its students. It's possible that the institution was only mesmerized by the dashing Stockton rush and the thrill of diving to the Titanic, oblivious to the questionable morality and scientific use of charging visitors to again visit the same sad wreckage. Hannah Ford says, I'm not sure if it makes me seem bad or my program or anything like that. However, it undoubtedly denigrates the institute as a marine science, technology, and industry-driven institution that was unable to recognize this operation for what it was. It is on the basis of trust that the engineer interacts with the general population. People believe we won't endanger their life, so they put their trust in us. Nobody would travel by air or over a bridge if it weren't for this trust. Such is public belief in engineering, which is today's case, and the belief is well-founded. Rare is it that an engineer that will take a life-threatening situation. The profession is designed to foster trust. In Canada, many engineers wear the iron ring after swearing to not henceforward suffer or pass or be privy to the passing of bad workmanship or faulty material, as written by Rudyard Kipling and first used in 1922. The National Society of Professional Engineers, whose members sign off on drawings of bridges and buildings, states that engineers shall hold paramount the safety, health and welfare of the public. The public automatically has faith in engineers. For the four passengers of the Titan sub, they had this faith. And so, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button to know more about Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate. Is he a genius or a psychopath? In our next episode, you can suggest interesting topics in the comment box below and we will try to feature them on our next episodes. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Untold, to see even more of our incredible videos.